now let's take a look at the flow interface now how does the flow interface look like and what are we supposed to do where are we supposed to do it what all things are available on the screen let's see that while we click on the new flow button so as soon as i click on the new flow you notice that the flow builder pop-up opens up and that lets you choose a template right so there are different types of flows we'll look into these in details we'll specifically be focusing on three of these in our entire curriculum because others are just templates these are the core templates that salesforce provides you to start with and you can also go to the all plus templates that lets you choose from a variety of flows okay based on your requirement it could be either creating a record of like you know maybe a case or it could be a request flow for a contact it could be a screen flow it could be a strategy related uh, flow so you have some templates to begin with so if you are let's say a business analyst or maybe a new consultant who wants to start with a template without having to start everything from scratch you can choose a template here and you can go ahead let's say reset password or maybe a simple product template or verify identity for authentication create a case right so when you click on one of these templates and you go ahead and say create a templated flow opens up and you can modify things based on your requirement okay we'll switch back to the core templates that salesforce provides and here i'll just open up let's say the screen flow okay we'll take a look at what of what all of this means but when i click on the create button this opens up the page and you are good to start your flow start building your flow and you see how how neat is this design if you have seen process builders and workflow rules this is pretty much very very, very easy to access very easy to use see when i go to this dot a plus icon opens i have a quick top nav navigation bar where i can do a lot of actions i have a start button i have an end button so this is where my flow starts this is where my flow ends so these are elements the start element and the end element okay let's take a look at the flow interface now if you see this interface screen right here our screen looks very much similar it's just that we have not created anything in our flow canvas is why you don't see anything and it is pretty much empty okay now take a look at the top section this is our navigation bar and the first thing that you have here is this box that clicked opens up the toolbox so this is where you will have all your resources you will have all your formulas your variables your constant that you have created any kind of things that you are using as part of your flow will be listed here it is by default closed you can just click on this button and open this box right here cool it is closed by default so that you have the entire canvas to use okay then you have something that's called select elements so you have some elements that will come up here you can just click on this button and choose multiple elements if you want okay and then like every functionality you have an undo and redo button and then you have a settings icon or a gear icon that configure some properties of this flow then you have two kinds of layouts you see this is the auto layout and if you switch to free form you get the toolbox available here like this and this is where all your resources are and what you can do is you can use any of these by dragging and dropping them okay so if you have to drop a screen you can just drop it here and that sh starts showing up and it will come here and you can use this node to draw and create kind of your flow chart from this starting where should it go where should it go next and all of that stuff if you want salesforce to handle this bit you can simply choose auto layout okay so this is the auto layout and if i if you see that right panel is gone and if you click here you just get this particular box of manager whereas when you click on the plus icon this is where you see all your elements this is the difference between auto layout and free layout one more time let's see if i go to the free form you see all the elements interaction elements logic elements and data elements are available here which can be dragged and dropped like this okay as soon as i drop it let's say first screen and i'll just leave this empty and i'll say done so you'll notice that the screen has come here and for me to be able to link them two together i can simply say this right here okay and i can now move it and i can put it here and then if i have another screen down below second screen right i can very well attach that to the first screen like this so this is how you arrange or make your sequence all right you can click on this delete icon to delete any specific item you can click on the arrow to delete the navigation okay so i'll just delete this and then i'll switch back to the auto layout now if i switch back to the auto layout it takes away that right panel and that right panel is now available on the plus icon here so i can simply choose screen here so this is a quick find box i choose screen so you see the screen pops up i'll say first screen and then say done so you see 
I did not have to arrange it. It automatically arranged it for me. So that's why it's called the auto layout. If I go ahead and choose the second screen, I can choose a second screen here. Okay, we'll talk about all of this stuff later, but just understand the very basics. So you see, it is automatically aligned. If I switch to free form, now I can move it myself. So I prefer the auto layout because it is very neat. And in cases where we manually change it, you see there is this chance of not having it very straight and you can just leave it like this, or maybe it would be like this. So it does not look neat and it looks a bit funky. I choose to go with the auto layout, lose these positions, and this is very formal and very neat and easy to understand. Okay, so that was the auto layout and before jumping into these options, I can click on the save button. When I click on the save button, the very first time that we click on it, it asks you to put a label and name just like everything needs a label and an API name. You need a label for the flow. So I'll just say my first flow, my flow interface. Okay. Let's just call it my flow interface. So the API name is automatically populated by removing all the spaces and then you can put a description down here. Okay, just looking at the flow interface not doing anything fancy all right so i can just go ahead and say save so that is the name of the flow take a look here this is the name of the flow it has also assigned a version to it we'll talk about versioning later but this is the first version of the flow it's called my flow interface v1 and now if you notice you see the gear icon or the properties icon is now available it was disabled first now that we have saved it i can very well go and change the name or change the description api name cannot be changed once added but i can still change the name Okay, that's why the settings icon is here for. We talked about the auto layout in free form and then you see the status of your flow. It says that you are currently on version one, which is currently inactive and it was last modified a few seconds ago. All right, now if I make any changes, I have to click on the save button again. I hope you understand that it's pretty straightforward. And if you want to create a new version, you can click on the save as, right? So when you click on the save as, it tells you, do you want to create a new version of the flow? So you'll say, yeah, go ahead and create a new version of the flow. When I click on the save button, now you will notice that you are currently on V2. That is a new version, right? We'll talk about versioning in detail. Just understand what the buttons do, okay? And once we are good with whatever version that we have on the screen, we have the activate button available. And once we click the activate button, the flow is activated. Okay, that's for activation. And then if you want to test it out, how do you do it without doing it in the real time? You have the debug option here. We'll look into the debug option also. Okay, so this debug is available for you to test out the flow without having to interact in real time, but it behaves, behaves pretty much real. Okay, so that's what the debug is for. It did not open anything because our screens are empty. If I were to just simply, let's say, display a text, don't worry, we'll look at everything in detail. Hello message. Okay. I'm going to rock flows. All right, I can just say bold. I can just say choose a color that's positive. Done. That's the green color. And I can also choose a better font size and a different font. Save. Save. See, I did not create a new version. I just said save. If I had to create a new version, I would say save as. And then if I say activate, let's not activate it for now because that's just dummy flow. Let's say debug. Right. So if you see now, if I click on the run button, it shows me we are going to rock flows and then it shows me the next button because there's another screen which is empty and then it shows the finish button. So we'll look into how the flow works and all of that stuff. But yeah, this is the button that you can use to debug or basically test out your flows. All right. We are good with whatever is on the top and then down and you see select elements is available. You can choose elements here like this. OK, and you can choose to have a bulk copy. There might be times when you need to copy paste elements, right? Because they have a similar screen or similar functionality, similar decision, similar item, similar logic, similar comparison. So you can choose to select them and copy and then paste them where you, wherever you need. Okay. You can also do it by clicking on the item and copying the element here. If you want to just do it on one item, you can choose that by clicking on the element here, right? What am I saying all of these things? I'm saying these are nodes, these are elements, this is the start element, this is the end element, these are all your toolbox or resources. So there are some elements of a flow, right? So there are some elements. Let's talk about those for a while. So we covered what the interface looks like. 
right so you see the top level is called what the navigation section wherein you have all your menu items the second part is your toolbox the third pass part is your flow canvas this canvas is nothing but a canvas to paint on a canvas to work on a canvas to build your flow a, can a canvas to write your flow the fourth part is how the start element the fifth part is basically your elements that take part of your as as uh, flow elements that decide what the flow will do and then the sixth part we missed out the sixth part right take a look at down below here you have an option to minimize your screen and zoom in and zoom out right so zoom in and zoom out you have this option why is this important because the canvas is unlimited but you might want to look at a specific set of items in the canvas so you can very well leave it to this maximum zoom or if you have 55 elements here that won't come in the screen itself right so you might want to zoom out and then move and then go to that element right so that's the idea behind having the zoom in and zoom out that helps you assess identify and look at or navigate to the right elements in the entire flow because there's no limit to the flow you can add as many elements as you want there might be an upper limit but yeah it, it there are cases when it, it goes very big and then it looks very messy but it, it should be very neat in terms of the names that you put in so that it is readable it makes sense in terms of what have you been trying to do why is it important to keep it neat let's say today you worked on the flow and then you added 45 nodes, three decision elements, 10 actions, all of that is on the flow. Now, next time after six months, a new joiner like me who comes in and who has to work or debug the flow opens and sees, okay, 50 elements. Where do I start with? What do I see? How do I understand? You are not in the company anymore. So how do I understand what has been done? So the only guideline I would have is these names, the way they have been put, the names of the resources that have been put do they make sense do i am i able to understand what does that mean if i click on an element the way the variables have been named the way the logic has been written those would be my guideline to understand how the flow is written and then i'll be able to tweak it and then i'll be able to save it and then i'll be able to modify it right so it's always important to maintain versions it is always important to keep them keep everything user readable with the best practices right good naming conventions keeping everything readable in terms of that things that make sense you cannot put uh, screen to this is not a good example right what should th it this happen this should say account information screen and then you have a description section right choose to write the description because that might help you in future that might help your teammate in future that's the very best practice that we should follow right so now if I say account information screen and I call this my general details screen i will be able to understand okay the person who land on the flow is probably using screen one to fill in some general details first name last name birth date and then company information maybe account information so it brings in a bit of understandability right that was my point of the last one 1.5 or two minutes okay cool so we looked at how the flow interface looks like and for the next set of videos that we have the next set of use cases that we have about uh, i believe 5 10 15 15 15 odd use cases or maybe more i'll be asking you guys also to put put in some use cases so that we can do them together so all of those videos will revolve around this particular screen everything will be done on these screens everything will be here so my idea behind this interface explanation and using this screen is to ensure by end of this curriculum you are ready to write flows on your own you do not need my help you do not need any seniors help you do not need any help at all and you are very comfortable and you are ready to rock flows all right go with the flow and then you can preach about it to your juniors you can preach about it to your seniors to your lead architects and you can provide solutions you can help business streamline the processes how beautiful is that right so let's try to instill in that level of confidence with the smart master class this curriculum so be with me till, till the end and uh, yes we will we'll learn this together okay cool so that was about the flow interface and now let's talk about the type of flows okay